Amanda Tennant and welcome to my Osteoporosis Pilates Mat Series. All of the exercises that I've included within these workouts are appropriate for those who have low bone density, who are at high risk or have a diagnosis of osteopenia or osteoporosis. It's really important that people with low bone density avoid a couple of positions. The first one being spinal flexion. We do not want to come into positions or exercises where we do a lot of rounding through the back and that includes our posture. So it's very important to pay really close attention to your alignment and to stay lifting up and out of the body. That helps take excess pressure off of the spine. The other position we want to avoid or movement is coming into extreme ranges of spinal twisting or spinal rotation. So everything that we do in these routines will avoid coming into the flexion, coming into the rotation, and especially coming into both at the same time. It's really, really important for keeping your body safe. So the most common fracture sites in those with low bone density are of the spine, the hips, and the wrist. We're going to take special care to strengthen all of those areas in a really safe and appropriate way. Of course, with Pilates, we'll also be strengthening the core, working on our alignment, and we'll be focusing on our breathing, which when Pilates breathing is done appropriately, it actually applies really healthy stress to the ribs connecting around into our back, and we begin to strengthen the back as well. So it's, it's great for people that have low bone density for keeping the bones strong in a really safe way. We're gonna be using a couple of props through these workouts. So the first thing I have here is just an ordinary beach towel. You can use a beach towel, maybe a smaller, like a thinner blanket, um, or even like a bath towel. But I do want you to have something if you can. So what I've done with my beach towel, lengthwise I folded it into half and then half again. So it was folded into fourth, so it's gonna line up right underneath my spine as we lay on our backs. And then I halved the whole thing. And I'll explain a little bit more as we go into the workouts why we have that and how to position yourself on it. The other thing that I want you to obtain for these workouts is a couple of water bottles. So you need two. And I still have water in these. You want them to match so that they're the same size. We have water in them so that we don't crush them when we press into them. We'll be pressing into these to help strengthen the wrist. Um, if you don't have a couple of matching water bottles, you could also use a set of small balls like medicine balls, weighted balls, or even tennis balls would work as well. Whenever we come down or come back up from the floor, we want to make sure we're doing what's called a log roll. We're literally going to be rolling like a log, like one unit. And we do that so we avoid those movements of flexion and twisting through the spine. So we will, I will show you that as we go into each workout and I will remind you. Also, as we transition through that roll, we're going to do it on an inhalation. The inhalation is going to give us more internal support. Again, we want to always be protecting these areas that are a bit more vulnerable to injury when we have low bone density. So I am excited to get started. I will see you in your workout. Thanks. Bye. Hi, thank you for joining me for my intermediate osteoporosis Pilates mat workout. So I have my beach towel that's been quartered. It's been folded in half and half again lengthwise and then the whole thing halved. So it's going to fit really nicely underneath my spine. The whole time that we're on our backs, we'll be keeping our bottoms down onto the mat off of the towel and the rest of us lined up onto a towel or you could use a blanket too. Um, and I also have two matching water bottles. You can use filled water bottles or a set of small balls, either weighted medicine balls or tennis balls. Okay, let's get started. We're going to come down onto our towel and we want to move like one unit so that we can protect the spine. We're going to log roll. So what I want you to do, I've got a fair amount of space here between my hip and the end of my towel. I'm going to come down, moving as a unit onto my side, and then as I breathe in with my inhale, I will roll onto my back and I want to avoid any twisting through the spine. Once I get on my towel, I'm going to take a minute to set up and get very comfortable here. So my, my bottom is not on the towel. It's only on the mat and I've got the base edge of my beach towel coming into my low back. So that's going to help protect me from coming into too much flexion, which could place undue pressure and strain areas when you've got low bone density. So we're going to keep 
all of our exercises in a more neutral position or into extension of the spine. Then I want to, I'm just gonna gently lift my skull and pull it out a little bit longer from my body and set it back down just to get some length through the neck here. And then the chest is going to fall open like it's falling off of the edges of the towel so that the collarbones are moving away from each other. I want to scoop and hollow the stomach, drawing the tummy down and into the spine. And I'm gonna be flat on top here because I'm in my Pilates neutral. I've got the towel coming into the low back, so you may feel a towel or blanket there, but we're not pressed and squeezing into it. We're not rounding out the spine. We're staying nice and level and flat on top. I'm going to take my water bottles, place them down on their sides, and then press gently down into the bottles from the palm of each hand. So I'm right in the center of my hand, and I will take care to keep my wrist really straight and long, and I'm gonna reach out through my fingertips. And in fact, I'm going to actually depress my shoulders and slightly roll my bottles further away from me so that I'm reaching really long out through the shoulder joints, creating space from the shoulders, through the elbows, through the wrist, right out through my fingertips. And with that gentle pressure down and in to the bottles or the balls, we begin to strengthen through the wrist joints, which is excellent. Okay, maintaining a tight stomach by drawing the belly down and in and keeping the pelvis really still, we're going to start warming up with a level two piston exercise. As I breathe in, I'm going to lift my right leg to a 90 degree angle and then keeping my pelvis as it is nice and still, I'm going to exhale and bring the left leg up to match it. I'm going to breathe in and lower the right leg down without popping my tummy or arching my spine and then exhale, let the left leg follow. And I'm gonna continue this just leading on the right leg. So I inhale the right leg up, I exhale the left leg up, I lower down the right leg with the inhale and I lower down the left leg. So I have two more repetitions. I continue reaching out through the fingertips, pressing down into the bottles, and I want to stay just as soft and as relaxed through the muscles of the upper body as I can so that my, my jaws are not clenching, my neck is soft, the chest is still spreading wide. And we're going to reverse, leading with the left foot. Now please inhale the left leg up, exhale the right leg up, lower the left leg down, staying really light underneath the feet. So we do not want to be pushing with our leg muscles. We want to use the stomach to control this. You should feel this work coming low and deep across the belly, like the lap belt of your seat belt. Like it's tightening into you. That's where you should feel this. Inhale to lift the left leg. Exhale to match it with the right leg. Lower down the left leg with an inhale. Lower down the right leg. And just one more time. Inhaling up. Exhale up. Inhale down and exhale down. From here, we're coming into leg slides. Again, the goal is to keep the pelvis really still, the tummy drawing in tightly. As you breathe out, you're going to slide the right foot out and away from you without changing the position of the pelvis. And as you breathe in, I want you to drag it back in, light underneath the foot, use the belly to pull it in, and we switch sides. So we exhale, reach the leg out and inhale pull it in and i'm using that stomach to pull it in i can feel my belly here so it's almost like there's a rope extending from my deep stomach muscles down to my foot and i use that rope to draw the leg back up and in. keep going inhale to reach out long away exhale draw deep into the stomach keep that neutral spine and really still through the pelvis Inhaling out, exhale, pull it in. We have three more times. Inhale to extend the leg. Exhale, draw it in. So we, we are trying to use the leg muscles as little as possible through all of these warm-up exercises and strengthening exercises. We want to use the stomach. Inhale out. This is the last time. 
exhale squeeze it and keep neutral through the pelvis we're going to lift the leg up like we're starting our piston exercise so we lift it just until that thigh is coming straight up and down and we're going to come into knee circles so pretending that your knee is a pencil we're going to start to draw circles on the ceiling we're going to open away from the body with an inhale and then exhale up and around your pelvis is going to try to hula dance during this you're not going to let it you're going to keep this left hip sitting really heavy you're going to keep the same amount of space underneath the back the whole time and you're going to stay flat and still on top of the pelvis we have one more inhaling open exhale up and around we stay on the right leg and switch directions inhale to lower exhale pull it up and around use the stomach to control the leg up and around three more inhale and exhale really still and steady here inhale and exhale the bigger your circles the more challenge you have now we're going to place the foot back down to the mat very gently like we're performing a piston let's switch we'll bring the left leg up we begin opening the knee to the left with our inhale and we finish with our exhale keep reaching out through the fingers press down through the palms of the hands let the chest be wide and open we also get the added benefit of starting to mobilize the hip joints here we start to open them up we start to lubricate the joints it's very healthy for them we switch directions on the left leg lowering down towards the other foot open up and around try to keep the opposite side of the pelvis very firm and still inhale and exhale two more last one okay we're going to keep the left leg in the air let the right leg come to match it we're coming into the hundred here so again we've got our neutral spine tummy tight for more challenge the feet will move away from you you want to feel the stomach here but you do not want to arch the back away from the mat let it be really nice and controlled the arms will begin pumping at your sides breathing in two three four five and out two three four five repeat let the chest stay really wide here i want you to imagine like you have a big wide smile coming across the chest and across the mid back let it stay open in two three four five and out two three four five long strong arms like you're hitting the top of the pool and making little splashes we're halfway through breathing in and out three more times you can move the feet further away for more challenge if you need it last two last breath here in for five exhale for five and then relax it down ah just settle back down and in and relax so we're coming into single leg stretch we will bring the right leg up 90 degrees the opposite hand is going to reach across the leg just underneath the knee and then the outside hand comes to the outside of the ankle this opposite leg begins to extend if it will go straight towards the ceiling then i want you to add a little bit of a turnout so you have some external rotation and then the lower you take the leg again you get a little bit more belly work but i do not want the back arching further away I also want to avoid coming into too much flexion so again we're just in that happy medium place we're in our neutral here as we inhale we start to draw the knee in towards the chest with a pulse so there's two little pulls on the inhale and as the exhale we switch arms and we switch legs so we inhale and we exhale that opposite leg is reaching across the room so it's active it doesn't get to be lazy especially if you can get it straight really stretch it across draw the tummy in tight inhale in and exhale switch one more on each side we're going to end with both legs coming down together double leg stretch we have the hands to the outsides of the ankles on the inhale the legs extend across the room with a small v in the feet arms overhead with the exhale the arms circle and the hands just come to the outsides of your ankles 
So we inhale, stretch, and exhale, draw it in. Again, I don't want you to hug the knees into the chest here. I just want you to come back into a nice neutral spine with the hands to the ankles so we can avoid coming into flexion of the spine, which can be a dangerous position for those with low bone density. Two more. Inhale, stretch it out. Nice, tight tummy. The torso stays still. Exhale, pull it in. Last one. Single straight leg stretch. We bring the right leg to the ceiling with a little bit of a turnout. I'd like for you to grab behind the thigh. I don't want you coming up to the calf or the ankle and rounding the shoulders up off of your towel. I want the chest to stay open, the spine really long. So please also refrain from grabbing right behind the knee. It's just uncomfortable and it places unnecessary stress through that joint. So somewhere behind the thigh, again, the opposite leg, is going to either reach to the ceiling with a little bit of a turnout in both legs. As you come down lower, it gets a little tougher. So you pick a comfortable challenge for you. We draw the chin down into the chest, the, the throat stays open and soft, and we begin pulsing in twice with our inhale. We switch on the exhale. Keep that turnout. Each leg is moving in line with this the hip with your hip bone like you're on railroad tracks here. Inhale, exhale to switch. One more each way. Relax the legs down and in. Just take a breath. Actually, let's just release the spine for a moment. So we're gonna press down through the palms of the hands into your bottles or balls. And let's, let's shrug the shoulders up with an inhale, exhale, release and slide down. And as you breathe in, let the back open away from the mat. And as you breathe out, just settle back into a neutral, tight tummy. A couple more times. We're going to inhale and just open the back up and exhale, settle back down. One more. Good job. We're going to come into corkscrew. So we'll draw one knee up at a time into a 90 degree angle. Let both legs come to the ceiling and put a small V in the feet. So the tailbone stays anchored. And just like we did with our knee circles, I want the, the pelvis to stay really still here. We're going to inhale both legs to the right and we're going to make a small circle up on the ceiling. Tight, tight stomach. We switch directions each time. We use a full breath. It's okay if these circles are small. Mine are really small here so I can keep the pelvis still and so I can keep my bum down on the mat and then keep my, my back just lightly pressing into my towel or off of my towel. Wherever your neutral is with your props is fine. Just keep it consistent and avoid really pressing into that low back. Let's try one more each way, please. Inhale to the right, exhale up and around. Of course, you can make larger circles for more work here. Bend both knees and set them down one at a time. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna come into a neutral bridge. I want the feet parallel in line with your sit bones and arms nice and long at your sides. So again, we do not press through the low back with this. We're going to lift as one unit. So place a little more weight through the heels of the feet. And as you inhale, you're going to hinge straight up. So there's no rolling through the spine. We do not want to roll. I want you to lift as one piece. And as you exhale, you will lower down so that the bottom hits the mat first. We are not rolling through the spine. We inhale, push it up, staying really straight across through the pelvis and exhale to lower down. Okay, we're gonna hold the next one up. Keep the tummy tight, inhale, press it up. Keeping the pelvis straight across here, I want you to try to lift one heel so that you kind of shift your weight. Set it back down gently, lift the opposite heel. Set it back down and now when we lower, let that tailbone lead. So I do not roll and flatten through my low back. We're going to repeat this. Inhale to press up. We're using the hamstrings, the tush, and the tummy. Now we start on the left. We start with the opposite heel. Just raise it up and hold it for a breath. Try to stay really steady here. The pelvis is going to want to shift around as you shift your weight, and you won't let it. That's how we get stronger. Really control that core. And now set the tailbone back down, lowering as one piece. 
We have two more. Inhale, push it up. Start with the right heel. Let it lift. Let's take a breath here. Set it back down lightly, really lightly. And then lift up underneath the left heel. And lower down. And lower the body with the exhalation. Last bridge. Inhale, push it straight up. Use the back side of the body. Now lift the left heel. Staying steady across the pelvis. Keep pressing down through the palms and the hands. Switch feet. And lower the heel. Lower the body as one piece. Excellent job. That's not easy. Okay, we're going to get rid of our balls or water bottles, whatever you had underneath your hands. We are finished with those. We're going to roll to the side and press up. So to roll to the side, I'd like you to use your inhalation and roll as one piece and then use your hands to help and press you up so we can stay really safe through the spine. We are also finished with our towel or blanket so you can toss that to the side and we're going to come onto all fours. So let's come on to the hands and the knees and um, I'd like for you to attempt to line your shoulders up right over the wrist. We're going to make Spider-Man hands. So you're going to spread nice and wide through the fingers, letting your middle finger point straight ahead. So if your hands were coming down onto the face of a clock, that middle finger would go right to 12 o'clock. It's going straight ahead. We soften at the elbow joints. Um, I want you to take care that you're not locking out and wrapping it around. I want you to soften so that the hollows face one another and we're going to bring the hips right up over the knees. So I don't want to see any rainbows. I don't want this. This is not good for the spine when you've got low bone density. I want you to stay long through the spine. I also don't want to see a sagging belly and have discomfort in your back. So I want you to pull up so it's really controlled here. Nice, long spinal position. As you breathe in, you're going to look up in front and let the sit bones rise up and behind. And as you breathe out, you come back to that tabletop. So no rainbows. Nice, tight tummy. You're going to breathe in. Look up in front. Let the sit bones rise. Come back to tabletop. One more. Breathe in. Come back to tabletop and we're going to wag the tail from here. You'll take your inhale. As you exhale, the left hip, the hips and the head all move to the left, I should say. Like you're looking back at your hip. You'll inhale back long and center. So we're coming into a little bit of a, a side bend. Like you're making a C curve from side to side. So no rounding through the spine, no twisting. Just a little bit of a side stretch and a release. Should feel really good. Like you're wagging your puppy dog tail. Inhale, center, exhale to the right. We'll come back to center and pause here. I'd like you to walk the legs together. You're going to squeeze together and we'll take the hands out in front, just a few inches. They're just out in front of my shoulders. And then we're going to drop the hips down. So we make a knee down plank here. So I would like to see a long line from the crown of the head coming down, connecting the dots to the shoulders and the hips and the knees. For more work, I want you to lift your feet. That is your choice. You stay spread through the hands and fingers and soften at the elbow joints and draw the tummy up and in. I just want you to hold and breathe here. Take another inhale. We're going to exhale and lower all the way down. With the feet up, this is a little tougher. And rest down onto the forehead. Let's take the legs open to the width of the hips with a small turnout, we're going to come into single leg kicks with a tight tummy so we eliminate any chance of having discomfort through the back. We'll prop up onto the arms. So you can prop up and continue that kind of little Spider-Man hand position with wide spread fingers, or you can come into fist like you're holding candlesticks. You can even bring your fist together in the center and wrap the palm of one hand over the other. So you can have Spider-Man hands, candlesticks, or bring it to center. Wherever you feel most supported is fine by me. Okay, this position should not look like this. I don't want you to sag, I want you to pull up and out and zip up the belly and your gaze is just a natural gaze ahead. So you're not staring down at your belly and you cannot see the ceiling. So we just get a really nice long spine here. Little bit of a turnout. The closer you bring the feet together, you get a bit more work here. So 
If you're having any back discomfort or if this is a new exercise for you, you might want to start with them hip distance apart. If you're very comfortable with this, you might want to bring them closer together, even so that the heels are touching. As you breathe in, you're going to bend the right knee and let the heel come towards the bottom with a little pulse pulse and then stretch it out long. So you might feel a stretch down the front of the leg or the front of the hip. You're using the hamstring, the muscles along the back of the thigh to pull the leg in. As we do this, we want to take care that we're not lifting up through the pelvis. If we have tightness, it likes to do that. So we're going to breathe in and stretch it out. Four more. Keep pressing up and out, zip up the belly. Last one. Ah, good job. We're going to roll with an inhale onto our side. You can prop up onto your hand. You can lay all the way down or bring both arms around to the front and, and get a cushion, something where you can relax the head down and keep the neck in line with your spine. And then once we have the head and shoulder and hips lined up along the back edge of your mat, the legs will come forward to the front edge. So I have this nice diagonal line here, like a 45 degree angle. I'm going to keep my hips stacked here, my shoulders stacked, and then the hand is going to rest down in front really gently and lightly for balance more than support. Um, we're going to use it as a balance assist. We're going to draw the tummy in to support us. Reach long through this top leg and reach it so long that it floats up. So it's almost as if somebody is pulling the leg out of your hip joint. I want it really energized. I want all the muscles active here. And we're going to place a little bit of a turnout. So I have my hip and knee and ankle and foot all kind of in the same line here, like they could be resting on a table. So just reaching out. We're coming into an exercise called front back. As you inhale, we're going to bring the leg to the front and do a little pulse. And as you exhale, it's going to reach long to the back like a stretch. We want to take care that we are not flopping and falling. It stays very stacked and squared off. So it's going to be an inhale to the front and an exhale reaching long to the back. We usually don't have quite as much range to the back, but of course some people have more than others. Just take it to where you can control it and to a place where it feels comfortable for you. So inhale front. This is our last one. We're going to stretch it to the back. We're going to come back and stack our legs again, one on top of the other. We're coming into up down. So as you breathe in, the leg is going to float up like it's very light, like it weighs nothing. And then I want you to again, like somebody's pulling that leg from your hip. I want you to reach so far out. You just have all the muscles working and shaking. So we inhale like it's no work and then we create that work. So we take this power from the powerhouse, from the core, and just press and reach long out that leg. Again, inhale up and exhale, press, 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 reach it out. And two more. Inhale up and press and squeeze. And last time. Push, 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 push all the way down. Good job. We're going to press up from here. We'll come around to the other side. So we'll come down. We want to line up the hip and shoulder, hip, and feet all along the back edge. And then we scoot our feet forward. Okay, so we start all lined up. We bring the legs forward onto the diagonal. We're going to begin with front, to front back. So we take that leg, really energize it, let it float up. A little bit of an external rotation there. Hand rests just in front. Shoulder stays drawn down. We're going to inhale and pulse to the front. And then exhale, reach to the back, staying really stacked and still through the torso. It's not easy. It should look really easy. <laughs> this is a tough one. We start to also work and stabilize our oblique muscles along the sides of the body as we come into our sideline work. And you should definitely feel your leg and your bum working as well. Last one, inhale front, exhale, reach it to the back. We stack the legs again, we move into up down. So we inhale to float up and then exhale, really stretch. It's almost as if that foot is trying to touch the wall across the room. It's just reaching so, so long, maintaining that turnout. Inhale up and exhale, press and reach. Stretch it down, keep the shoulder relaxed, keep the neck soft and the face. We tend to want to clench jaws, <laughs> shoulders when we're working hard. Let the work come down into the stomach and into that leg. Last time, please inhale up, 
Exhale, press and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze it all the way down and you did it, we're finished. Go ahead and press up. Great work today. Once you feel really comfortable with all of the exercises and the intermediate routine, then be sure to check out the advanced version. We will add some new things. We'll add on to some of the exercises we did today and um, we'll just keep you progressing right along. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at Amanda's Corner. It's C-O-R-E-N-E-R -E -E at charter.net. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, bye-bye.